Welcome back, everybody. This is going to be our Algebra 2 Transformation of Functions Lesson Number 3, Vertical Stretching Homework Review, Part 3. And again, I hope you guys uh, find this helpful. And if you if you have any questions, leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit that like button if you found this to be helpful to you guys. So we have this question number seven. The parabola is shown graph to the right that is transformed for transformation of y equals x squared. The transformation includes a vertical stretch and a vertical shift. Based on your answer, write an equation for this parabola. <clears throat> well, it's a vertical stretch and vertical shift, so we know that there hasn't been any horizontal movement. So we see in this case that the original vertex should be zero, zero. Okay. And a couple of things. Now, the new vertex is at 0, comma, next 7. Now, I want to be very clear about this, though. Our vertical shift is going to occur at the very end. And the reason is a vertical stretch is a multiplication of the function itself. All right? A vertical stretch is, a, is, a, is going to be a <clears throat> multiplication of the function itself, and multiplication comes before any adding or subtracting. And so we definitely see in this case that we're going to shift at the end uh, by subtracting 7 to the function. Now, the original function would be at 0, 0, and then 1, 1, or uh, neg 1, 1, and then 2, comma, 4, and neg 2, comma, 4, and at 3, comma, 9, so somewhere over here, and neg 3, comma, neg 9, so over here, so neg 3, comma, positive 9. So it would look kind of like this. Hopefully I can just draw a decent picture here. Oh, gee whiz. But what happens now is that you'll notice our regular function goes, when you go to the right by 1, you go up by 1. And we go right by 2, you go up by by 4, because, you know, 2 squared is 4. You go right by 3, you should go up by 9. But in this situation, our new function, we go right by 1, we go up by 2. Okay. And if you go the right by two, we're going up by, we're going up by, in this case, eight. Because for the next seven to positive one is eight. So, so it's in this case, we, we see here, it's the y value is changing by a factor of two. We're multiplying by two. Normally, if you go to the right by one, you go up by one. Here on the new transform, transform function, we go to the right by 1, we go up by 2. So 2 times 1 is 2. The original x squared, you go to the right by 2, you go up by 4, because 2 squared is 4. Here for the new transformation, we go to the right by 2, we go up by 8. So instead of going up by 4, we go 2 times 4 is 8, which means we have here a vertical stretch. by a factor of two. Because we're multiplying the y value by two after we plug in the x value, okay? So that's really what's happening here. So we're gonna multiply the x value by, uh, multiply the function by two. And then what we're gonna do here is a vertical shift down by seven. Because after we make, after we stretch this vertically by two, we're going to shift everything down by seven, which means our final function is going to be y is equal to two times x squared minus seven, or y equals two, oops. So we get from, again, rushing through this y equals 2x squared minus 7 is going to be the function we have here. Okay? Again, the y values are being stretched by a factor of 2 from the original one, and then we were shifting everything down by 7. Okay? Question number 8. The function h of x is defined by the equation h of x is equal to 4 times f of x minus 12. And it says, determine two such transformations that can produce the graph h of x from f of x. Specify two transformations and the order they occurred. So let's take a look at the first one. So the first one would be, well, it looks like we're multiplying by 4. So our first set, I'll call it A, our first set would be 1 
First, a vertical stretch by a factor of four. By a factor, so happens I can't spell. A factor of four. So we're multiplying by four, and then secondly, we're going to shift everything down by 12. So a vertical shift down by 12. All right, so that's the, our set to, to uh, this is our first set of transformations, a vertical stretch and a vertical shift. Now, the hint for the second one, as a hint, write h of x in its factored form. Well, h of x in its factored form would be 4 bracket f of x minus 3 because of the fact that we have here a uh, greatest common factor of 4. So if we use that, we're now going to take a look at this from this point of view. And in order of operations, we do any, if any, transform, any transformations in the parenthesis first. And we see here our first transformation will not be the multiplication. It will be work, whatever's work inside the brackets here. And so this would be a vertical shift first. Down by three. So the first thing we'll do is do a vertical shift down by three. And afterwards, now we deal with our second transmission, the number multiplying the whole result by four. So that's a, then a vertical stretch in this order by a factor of four. And so we see here that, yes, a vertical stretch by factor 4 does occur second, but to get the same result, we're going to do the vertical shift down by 3 first. It will give the, if, if you do the vertical shift first, we will then do a, well, then what we're going to end up doing is going to be uh, vertical shift first. We then have to, we're going to stretch afterwards. We have to take care of that shift by 3. And you see in this case, it will give us the same result. Same result because so again we're following our order operations to help us figure out what comes first and next. Okay, everybody. All right, and so try these out. Try this out. I think in this case, if you we use x squared in, in in one way to kind of take a look at this, if you want to test this out and see, is that do we get the same and on a graphing calculator is y equals to four x squared minus twelve? Do we get the same function as y equals four parentheses? x squared minus 3. Okay? And you know what? If you distribute everything, it should make sense. But again, based upon our transformations, that's what we're looking for. Okay, so let me just make this full page here. All right, everybody? And so this will be the end of our Algebra 2 Transformation of Functions Lesson 3, Vertical Shifting of Functions, Horg Review, Part 3. And again, if you find this helpful, Give a like, but also if you have questions or comments, leave questions or comments in the comment section below. I look forward to hearing from you and, and getting back to you on those questions. And uh, then I also I'll see you in the next video when we do, start talking about the horizontal shifts. Okay. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Take care and be safe.